So one time I was on YouTube when I stumbled across an opening for an anime called Shadow Skill. I thought it looked pretty cool and I was immediately hooked. The series is streaming absolutely nowhere so I had to resort to buying the DVDs off eBay. With all that being said, this is probably my favorite anime right now. Shadow Skill takes place in a fantasy setting called Karuta. Every generation, a new warrior is born and becomes their kingdom's champion. The main character of the series is a girl named El Ragu, the 59th of all. The series centers around her and her younger brother, Gao Ban, as they travel across Karuta. Now next is when I would talk about the story, but in my personal opinion, this is where Shadow Skill's biggest weak point comes out. The story is almost non-existent. I don't know if I wasn't paying attention or if it was actually not that engaging, but by episode 25 I just sat there and I was like, what the hell just happened? But honestly, that's not the main point of Shadow Skill. The strongest point about the series is the relationship between Elle and Gao. Gao is an orphan whose parents were killed at a very young age, and Elle decided to adopt and raise him. Elle is not a conventional mentor at all. She's a brute and she's not somebody that would typically become the Saval. All that being said, she sees potential in Gao that many others do not see. And during the series, she's always training him to become the next Saval after her. Every single time she's training with Gao, she wants him to become stronger. Get it together, Ga! Think back, Ga. Why did you defeat Lo? Remember when we first met? You were just a kid who said he wanted to be strong. Was that kid lying, Ga? He wasn't, was he? The dynamic between the two really carry the story. Another thing that really makes or breaks the series for me is the animation. I have never seen more inconsistent animation in my entire life. This is common in anime. Sometimes they have a more experienced crew working on a more important episode. But every once in a while, the style changes so much you start to wonder if it's even the same show. The art in the manga is very stylized to the point where they don't even look human. And the movie is the same way. And every once in a while we get those episodes. But then in the very next episode, they're completely normal. It's really jarring, but at the same time, I kind of like it. It kind of shows like the two extremes this show could have gone in. Something strange about the TV show's animation is it came out around the time that 2D digital animation was kind of new, but they haven't quite yet phased out 2D cell animation. So every once in a while, there's just a scene that's really obviously edited in digital, and it's really jarring, but again, I like it because it's such a sign of the time. This isn't the only anime that does this. There's another one I've seen called Gokudo, which every once in a while you could tell that this was not animated in the same way. There are some episodes that kind of cut corners, but when Shadow Skill really gets into its action, it really gets into it. Another thing I really like about Shadow Skill, just in general, is the setting. I like that it's a fantasy story, but it's not really based in any one type of mythology. It feels like a culmination of Northern European and Greek and even some Japanese. And too, it's kind of its own thing. I love the character designs and the music is just classic. Another thing, the voice acting kicks ass too. With classic anime like this, I usually watch the English dub. It's just really nostalgic to me. And in my opinion, everyone does a really good job. If you're familiar with the Ghost Stories English dub, it's the same team, so expect to hear some familiar voices. Well, fine then! I guess you prefer Ellie's stupid kiss to my serious treatment! Ha! What? Ketra, what are you retarded? Now we'll never find out who the ghost is. I hope to God you're adopted. Another thing that blew me away was... In every single Japanese adaptation of Shadow Skill, Elle has been voiced by Megumi Hayashibara, who did the voice of Rei Ayanami from Neon Genesis Evangelion. It's crazy for me to think about how soft and calm the Rei voice was compared to Elle, where she just sounds like a gnarly animal. So Shadow Scale is a really hit or miss TV show, but let's talk about the movies in OVA for a second. Both of these are excellent. The movie covers a bit of the same story that the TV series covers, which I'm guessing are the same chapters from the manga. It introduces El, Gao, Fauri, and Kyo in pretty similar ways to the anime. What I love about the movie is just the style. I mean, look at it. I know a lot of people would say this style is ugly, but for me, I love this. Anime that's so stylized to the point where they don't even look human anymore. The action, again, is just top notch. Only downside, and this might be irrelevant to some people, but the English dub is some of the worst I've ever heard in my entire life. Same thing with the epilogue, it's just bad. It genuinely feels like they got people who've never voice acted in their entire life. <laughs> gotcha! I'm right, I'm right, get out of the way, fat legs! That's a bit much calling me fat legs, bitch. You could have at least described me as the golden antelope. The OVA, also known as the epilogue, is probably the best of the three. It's more of a contained side story. Here we see El taking Gao to the grave of his mother and father as a yearly ritual. The animation here is perfect, as well it does a better job at explaining the lore of where the ancient warriors, the Saval, came from. 
If you're gonna watch anything from Shadow Skill, I highly recommend the epilogue. And if you don't wanna watch the entire movie, honestly, just watch the end fight scene. It is terrific. In total, I think Shadow Skill is an overlooked gem. Does the series have problems? Yeah, it really does. But it's very memorable because of its characters and the dynamic that they have between each other. I think Shadow Skill deserves a second chance. It has the creativity, it has the passion, and it might have just been that the time was wrong. Is it going to happen anytime soon? Probably not, but if Doro Hidoro received its first anime adaptation like 20 years later, I think anything is possible.